Hello students and uh, I welcome you to another segment in which uh, today I will be talking about the pelvic anatomy because some of you uh, have requested me to take this video as you are not able to properly understand the anatomy when you are doing the surgeries. Some of you who are in second year or third year who have been exposed to uh, you know doing surgeries either assisting surgeries or performing them themselves. Uh, even in C-section in case of uh, hysterectomy specifically because the uh, structures around the uterus especially when you're going deep in pelvis they become very confusing you're not able to recognize uh, most of the structures and obviously when you are a surgeon it's very very essential for you to know the complete anatomy uh, even in the distorted cases you'll be able to you know save the vital structures and that's your job that's your duty and that's part of your skill so i'll try my best to make you understand the pelvic anatomy um, that you are supposed to know when you're doing your uh, surgeries specifically hysterectomy and of course c-section will also come along with it here i'd like to mention about regarding my two videos in which one i have tried to explain you the relationship between uterine artery and the ureter and how it you know kind of dissection of the bladder away from the lower segment delineates the ure ureter away from the uterine artery and you can safely you know ligate clamp and cut the uterine artery you should watch that video definitely and then the other video is all regarding step by step procedure of hysterectomy in which i've tried to explain you in each and every step how to not just identify but also save the structures from uh, uh, you know surrounding important vital structures uh, the dissection techniques and many other things I have tried to include in those videos. Some are free for all and some of them are only reserved for my uh, regular students. So today without wasting any further time let's start um, uh, to understand the pelvic anatomy and I've taken uh, this uh, picture from the net to make you understand that uh, the problem areas in which you get caught and this is the reason why you are kind of uh, apprehensive regarding um, your uh, hysterectomy technique and even in case of your c-section sometimes so uh, let's just begin without wasting any further time see over here what you can see this is the fallopian tube all right here this is the fallopian tube this is the ovary and this over here is the round ligament now when you see the round ligament this side specifically because the, it's not very uh, easily visible here but here the round ligament is very clearly visible on the left side it has this uh, avascular broad ligament sheath available over here this is the plane of dissection the plane in which you know we uh, kind of uh, clamp the, uh, the, uh, the round ligament over here and we clamp it somewhere away, you know, not very close to the uterus, away, probably this place. So that we get this entire area of avascular sheath for us. Because here, it will, you know, easily uh, make the two flaps of broad ligament, that is anterior and posterior, very, very visible for us. And why we need it? Because the anterior flap of the broad ligament will continue with the peritoneal covering of the bladder in, in, the, in front of the uterus both side so whenever we have to dissect the bladder we just have to go from this round ligament to this round ligament whenever and uh, the posterior uh, flap of brown uh, the the broad ligament here is where we will create a window okay so this is the part of the you know ovarian ligament and here somewhere is the part part of the uh, infundibular pelvic over here it's probably easily seen infundibular pelvic ligament now if you see in the resting phase of the uterus this tube rests around here and if you you know kind of try to see it properly this is where the ureter is can you see here which i'm marking clearly it can be seen this is the ureter now if you ask me you know from where is this ureter coming i can trace it back till here this is your common iliac artery common iliac artery gives here the external iliac artery this this you know this round robust you know very very healthy two structures which you can see over here they are external iliac artery external iliac vein and over here this place there is a branch that is the common iliac artery 
divides into externally iliac and internally iliac internally iliac kind of goes here inside because it has to supply all the vital structures inside the pelvis and externally iliac artery goes externally to supply you know the muscles and the you know legs the ligaments and all that so basically externally iliac artery goes externally exter internally iliac artery goes for the internal structures of the pelvis in a broad way this is where the internal and the external arteries they divide and here is where the ureter crosses the artery to move towards the you know bladder so this entire thing which you can see is the ureter over here also and you can't see it over here because it's the fallopian tube is resting over it that's why we say that in the resting position that means until unless you've kind of made the uterus erect the uh, the fallopian tube is resting over the ureter now uh, the other thing which uh, my students were a little um, concerned about is round ligament is fine creating a hole is also fine uh, you know ovarian ligament is okay if you want to preserve the ovary you kind of put the clamp over here if you want to take out the ovary you put the clamp on infundibular pelvic ligament wherever you make the window you have to either put a clamp here or you have to put a clamp here which is very evident in my hysterectomy video now they asked the other thing that they were asking was the ureter is right there okay where your uterine is now the you know the internally iliac artery gives a branch over here and uh, uterine artery is very close now the question is how come the ureter is not cut when it's right there 2.5 centimeters we say lateral and below so how come it's, it doesn't come answer is when you you should see that video of mine when you cut the anterior flap of broad ligament that means when you push down the bladder on the anterior segment of the uterus in which you are trying to send away the bladder down with it this ureter goes lateral it's pushed lateral and below so it, it has a tunnel you know when it is crossing it goes into a tunnel over here i did a um, uh, operation on uh, cervical fibroid and when there is a cervical fibroid that means somewhere over here the ure ureter is very very close in proximation to the to the you know because it's the cervix right it's the, that area which we are dissecting is right very close to the ureter so it was it, it became became very difficult to you know kind of save the ureter as a result of which we try to directly visualize the ureter and then put the clamp so anyways <clears throat> the ureter kind of uh, goes laterally as you cut the flap of uh, you know the bladder over here the peritoneum which covers the bladder and you push the bladder down the ureter goes down very very down and uh, lateral so you can easily put the clamp here here if you can see this is the internal loss and you can put the clamp on the uterine artery you can ligate it and then you can separate it the other question was that how do you recognize the uh, uterosacrals so it's very very easy you just have to make taut the the uterus properly you have to make the uterus very taut and you have to put you have to feel those uh, you know the the uterus sacrals and then put a clamp over here and then uh, you know kind of after taking the suture you have to ligate it with the vaginal cuff so that there is no vaginal prolapse it's a very very important step a very small step but it will ensure that you do not face a problem of vaginal cuff prolapse which is very very you know skillful to treat it's not very easy to treat uh, vaginal cuff prolapse because along with it you have to do uh, caldoplasty as well so in that case it becomes very very difficult both vaginally and uh, abdominally because already the uterus has been removed there are multiple additions over there and you know many other things so anyway this is the technique of doing a, a hysterectomy and trying to safeguard the vital structures kind of um, it, it's showing this anatomy is showing that you know how to save the ureter the bladder if you can see the bladder is very much visible over here the bladder flap which covers you know the lower part of the uh, uterine segment bladder is not that difficult to you know recognize but yes in case of cesarean sections it becomes slightly difficult with surgeries you are able to understand it better 
but uh, so so much so i could have you know kind of told you this is the pelvic anatomy this is how it looks and i hope uh, you you'll be able to understand your uh, anatomy better when you're doing your uh, c section and your um, hysterectomy and still if you have doubts please let me know but be very very specific about your doubts because i try to uh, answer questions in a vague uh, uh, way if you're not able to come up with specific questions so this is um, me trying to explain you the general pelvic anatomy but if you want to know specifically certain thing please let me know i'll be very very happy to help thank you so much